ここに待機しています。了解いたしましたこうしゃそもしっかり装備しなくちゃ修理の皆さんあのああもうちょっと修理ゆきこぜ修理に入りますねお腹いっぱいっぽい前段作戦第三作戦か山城遅れないで出撃よ手法の火力だけは自慢なのえ防御力と速力そんなの
も欲しいけどお守りしました大丈夫次も自慢なのえ防御力と速力だって私足柄がいるんだもの本当にヨリドリミドリっぽいあぶくまご期待にこだわ全方も開いてください十番の手法は伊達じゃないのよが薄い艦隊をお守りします,しますほーらね弾幕ですここにいたでしょ皆さん私の指示に従ってください、うん、従ってくださいダメ見ないで見ないでヒューガには負けたくないのできれば離脱してください早速航空隊準
ンジ発刊かかれいい感じいい感じ<笑>いいねいいねしっかりやっぱ口聞かない世界は先頭だ大丈夫引っ越せよこんな姿じゃレイテ突入は無理ねやっちゃうからねできれば離脱してくださいなりきりますよーし一気に再開かけよ順次発刊かかれ<音声>さーて野戦ねどこかの野戦ばかりには負けないから沈むわけにはいきません。十分の手法は伊達じゃないのよ。手法の火力だけは自慢なのえ防御力と速力だって私足柄がいるんだもの,の当然の結果よね大勝利足柄よ高麗激戦が得意なの<笑>よろしくねが祈祷しましたデートク呼吸これでバッチリ戦えます<笑><笑>お腹いっぱいっぽいはいもう少しでコーチ応答が大きいと肩が凝るのデートク作戦成功しましたさすがです明けましておめでとうございます本年も不相方よろしくお願いいたしますセンチデートク空はどうしてあんなにも青いのでしょうおいあ新しいお仲間が来るみたいねあ新しいお仲新しいお仲間が来るみたいねやっと会えたかげろうよよろしくねしましたよろしくお願いいたします提督あけましておめでとうございます本年もクソウ方よろしくお願いいたします提督おめでとうございます提督、作戦を実施し了解いたしました提督作戦計画概要をご説明します全乱作戦第三作戦山城遅れないで出撃よ
この秋月が健在な限りやらせはしませんさあ行こうか皆さん私の指示に従ってくださいうん従ってくださいさあ行こうかのの火力だけは自慢なのえ防御力と速力あらあれそんなのよし。全ただ、Other than making the ships likely more manageable against BBAP penetration, which may or may not be checked, it is designed so that no one can complain that they are playing a handicapped system. The kit is designed so that you scrub lords can play destroyers properly without getting carried away by overpowered armor. Being the only DD with a heal allows you to dive deeper and take more damage while you cripple down enemy destroyers. Because every dead destroyer gives 69% moral boost to your Torias team that always complain about weekend players ruining their games. And it's p r e f e r a b l e to have a friendly destroyer along with you, especially if it's also American. Therefore, you can show the enemy that money and naval superiority will fall. Fuck's sake, Akatsuki, what the fuck? I'm here trying to demonstrate a good strat, and here you are ruining the whole scene while making my teammate look dumb. Once the enemy destroyers are dealt with, you can start farming damage with your guns. You do this by abusing cover or shooting in the open like a jackass. The latter is particularly useful if you feel like throwing insults to the helpless enemy. But always remember that islands are the game's skill barrier between Unicums and Scrub Lords. You use them to dumb down the enemy while you farm damage without the need to smoke up or relying on someone else to spot for you. And because you are fun, The engagement, making the enemy look even more stupid. That are slow and takes forever to reload. This forces you to think like a m u n i c o m and predict what will happen in the next few minutes. ひだ巨雷をすべて放棄して誘爆を防いで
ヒューガまだ負けたで大丈夫まだ高校できます後ろ,後ろ処方を持ちかけえますえー、やっちゃうからね<笑>いいねいいねやっぱ口くちゃんの崩壊は戦闘だからいっくぜヒューガには負けたくないの被弾しました私防御力やっちゃうからね少し後ろ手法を打ちますしっかり、えー、よしないと一気に畳みかけるぜさて野戦ねどこかの野戦バカには負けないからそうだねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいいねいまだよラケジョービスは沈むわけにはいきません全方も開いてくださいダウンちゃんと見てたあっそうだねいいじゃないですかよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよかったよ This is how you play the kid, and the game itself for that matter. Now, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm 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 going to be able to do it. お腹で得意。明けまして。おめでとうございます。本年も。ふさわかった。よろしくお願いいたします The USS Missouri is the first tier 9 premium ship, and proof that wargaming ideas of making new premium is to clone an existing ship and slap a Panther Slave Yuri New Den! Liokaitashimashita! But what they don't realize is that it's exactly how to wheel idiots onto buying a high tier premium. Sora, what do you think of this? I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Because it's the closest thing you'll get to feel like from a relevant, like completely irrelevant. Why even bother buying more premiums after you get one of these? Atashi no nawa shikinami. Igo yoroshiku. It has a choice of camo paints. Both of them are blue. You choose the second one. よろしくお願いいたします。
When you got near a camp, and sees a camping scrub, you pop radar, you make them look like Gary Johnson during the president. <laughs> The USS 3XP has decent side armor to bounce bad shells and a thicker frontal bulkhead, but it doesn't matter because gigantic Weibo shell still goes through it just like what's inside the Daojins you're eating right now. If the enemy is upset and starting to focus you down, You do not sail alone. You do not snipe. You roll with your teammates, so they can all see each other. If you have to meet another sister head to head, this is how you get the job. You say Linda is so nice. 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 The misery has shit handling, and cannot do talk beats, unless a Reggie God's conveniently opened a gap for you. ありがとう。
ここに待機しています。艦隊が戻ってきたようね。戦果あるかな？空はどうしてあんなにも青いのでしょう提督作戦成功しましたよろしくお願いいたしますあ
Destruction stations.
torpedoes to starboard. ご説明します。全弾作戦第三作戦海域作戦戦艦不走出撃いたします。
手法の火力だけは自慢なのえ防御力と速力アギズキ艦隊をお守りしました
手法の火力だけは自慢なのえ防御力と速力こんな私でもやればできるそうなのねっ提督か作戦完了鑑定戻りましたよかった補給これでバッチリたたっくありがとう再び作戦に参加するための修理ですやだ収容タンクに穴がえ弾薬庫や養殖庫も<笑>お腹いっぱいっぽい<笑>カタパルトもう一機あった方が提督おめでとうございます了解いたしました
提督そんなに触ると弾薬庫がちょっと心配です
しろ提督提督あらよかったフソここに待機しています
こえないのかしら提督提督あらよかったフソここに待機しています
こえないのかしら提督提督<笑>よかったウソここに待機しています Истребитель взлет произвел.
聞こえないのかしら提督提督あらよかったここに待機しています。提督明けましておめでとうございます本年もおい作戦計画概要をご説明します With reload and AR, it's below 20, and you. With reload and AR, it's below 20, and you have just to give you a perspective how many torp logs. 前段作戦、第三作戦会、山城、遅れないで、出撃よ。And they all launch two torpedoes. Fighting occurs in the center, no team killing needed. Fighting should occur in the center. The ceiling is soft, the floor is soft, the walls are soft. Thunderbird for the 25th. Don't you just hate it when your cat wakes you like? Meow 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 meow. I do now. Nico Agricola, thank you for the 15th. This is the end of the day. I won't do it. Just wait. Nico, please help me. Please help me. この秋月が健在な限りやらせはしませんああな手法の火力だけは自慢なのえ防御力と速力秋月艦隊をお守りしました大丈夫スケートスイどうしたらいいのは
Kills in this game, but it's gonna be ridiculous anyway. Oh, Jesus, this guy's got a lot of power. Oh, I don't know. Oh, shit, there's so many torps coming for them. Holy shit. <gasps> oh, they ran out. Those ones didn't. No, he's turning the wrong way. Last round's winner gets obliterated. Oh, freedom hill. Freedom hill, freedom hill, freedom hill. Oh, the beats. When your wife wakes you up with fucking let me out of the basement, you sick fuck. I'm sorry, what? Uh oh. Oh oh. Smooth. Smooth beats. There's so many more coming though. There's so many more coming though. Holy shit. Oh, shit. oh! Oh! He survives! Barely! 
あけまして to... おめでとうございますよっぽぼい what the hell are you doing back here for? ふそうがたよろしくお願いいたします Your teammate is struggling in the center and you're hiding behind a goddamn island? What is wrong with you? You're so dead cold. I'm sorry to tell you. Ah, my Yoba boy, what is this? You better impress us now. You're getting this big tip to you now. You better impress us after all that. Twelve Friesland Torp only. <laughs> See when the torps get spotted that they have launched. Oh, oh. Darling! It's hard to have much respect though when he's running away. Everyone else is rolling in the same direction. You don't know, they don't need to chase you if they don't wanna, they can just sit in the middle and you have to come to them. Leaving the center is where the carrier should come in and blast it. Shame, shame, shame. Indeed. This graceful display. Triple cap for Team Green because of this. Carrier commissars, indeed. Ise, Hugo, you are. I get a canino. Minasa, but does not see me stag at the Kudasa. Instead of solo, where we have so much. Then Homo, he died at the Kudasa. Do you know she holds a dead and I am fifty five points? This guy just brought it, huh? Minasa. Every single random battle team, man. Ah, oh, he fucked up. Nine hundred points. He's still outside of the camp. Really, the torpedo joust is gonna end on points. What a shame for this prey. Shame for nine hundred and six. Yeah, it's actually gonna end on points, not on kills. Oh man, very shameful. Very shameful. This is the time for the ding chat. Chat, where, where's my where's my flamu shame emote? Where is it? Let me see it. Where's 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 flamu shame? Where's the ding 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 shame potato? There we go. Good shaming. That's what I want to see. Lucky. <laughs> shameful. Well done though. That was absolutely hilarious to watch. Big shame. Hello, hello everyone. After I made my top 10 recommended teams, I was asked to make a similar list, but for premiums that I am, let's say, strongly against. Premiums I would not recommend getting. Now, there's actually such a huge list, list of really bad premiums. I'm just
just gonna highlight a couple of things here that I think are a waste of your resources resources that could be better. Now, what I do want to say is thank you so very much for your support on my Twitch channel. Uh, I'm actually, I've actually reached 93,500 giveaway I will find will giveaway to give to click follow on my Twitch channel basically away for a gigantic giveaway on my so thank you very much if you now, below tier five, below tier five, them. But let's start with tier five since this is what we start like 10 euros or it has multiple issues, highly limited, and more importantly, this ship has absolutely no armor at all. I'm not say absolutely no armor, In fact, the Marblehead is one of the few ships, just like the Omaha, that can overmatch its own armor. If you shoot another Marblehead, you can overmatch his nose with AP, and you can citadel him straight through the nose. And the citadel is actually gigantic, so Marblehead, especially if you're up here in anyway, a floating citadel. Another example is the Krasnik Queen, which is incredibly squishy to arm, but it's just it's also very slow. This is with speed flag, it does 29 knots. Um, it's got poor concealment, it's got no real punching power at all. Like you can eventually go to DD with these guns, but in terms of damage output, it's just so underwhelming. Just, just skip it. Do you know what? Same issues. Giant floating citadel, but whereas this one does have some decent okay qualities, it comes with a gigantic, gigantic cost of a 20 second reload on these guns. Like, why on earth would you play this when you can play the Furutaka instead? The pitiful damage, the out damage output is pitiful, and it can't really tank any damage at all. Yahagi. Six. 152mm guns with a 9 second reload. Uh, like, wh wh what else do I need to say? This is just a joke. Viribus Unitis. Um, this thing has 35.7k health at tier 5 in a When you consider that, you, you can probably get dev struck by two IGN torpedoes. Because the torpedo belt is so weak. Th this thing is basically just a massive bug. Just, just don't, 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 don't. <laughs> These are all big We could go through a lot more, but honestly, we're just good. we're gonna move on to tier six at this point. Um, I would choose Huang He. Um, low HP pool. Now you can get some gimmicky DD hunting going on with this thing, and you can farm some PR. But ultimately, the ship has 24k health. It's very slow for a cruiser. It's 33 knots for a supposedly sneaky hunting cruiser. Um, it has the damage output, I think it's 113k DPM, which is just laughably poor, and the range is laughably poor. Uh, if you get up tiered in any way in this thing, and you actually have to fight someone one versus one, and you can't use a smoke gimmick, you just get deleted. Um, it's good for farming PR, but it's not good for fulfilling the basic role of a premium, which is farming credits and money. Duka kind of has the same issues. It's just a really poor damage platform. DPM is poor, 14km range. Um, even worse so is that the guns actually have a really trash fire chance at 8%. So you cannot do really do anything about battleships. Even if you land your torpedoes, you got 2x3 of them and they don't hit that hard. Duka is simply not worth the money when there are so many better options. One more, uh, Prince Eitel Friedrich. Um, what's there to say? It's the only German battleship in the game that doesn't have a turtle back, which means that it's the only German battleship that you can reliably citadel just by shooting it, shooting its broadside from range. Um, it has 305 millimeter guns, or sorry, 350 millimeter guns, with the worst HEDPM of any tier six battleship, 
and the AP has the worst penetration of all tier 6 battleships. So worst HEDPM and worst AP penetration. Um, I mean, really. And it's 28 second reload and 45 second turret reverse. It's just, just don't. There, there are so many better options than the Prince Aita 3. Just absolutely not worth it. Let's move on. Tier 7. What do we have at tier 7? Battle starts. Um, Bliska. Bliska used to be good, but honestly, the Bliska never really recovered uh, after the, after the nerf, the stealth fire change. It's kind of been powered hard since then. A uh, good recent example is the Wacklin. Um, this thing deals 119k HEDPM. 119. The Wacklin, the French tier 7 uh, destroyer, deals 120k DPM. That's without using the reload booster. But it also has one kilometer better range. It also has a better fire chance. It also has better armor pin on the HE because the higher caliber. Um, it also it's also significantly faster. It also has much more health. Like <laughs> this thing has just gotten outclassed hard. Uh, the biggest issues is really the lack of concealment. Even if you build full concealment, it's iffy. Um, the DPM is an issue. The lack of it basically most other ships just outreach. Strength using anti aircraft gun crews are on full alert. Hard, and then there's points who simply don't really care about your speed at all. Um, even worse is that it's tier 7, so it gets up tiered a lot. It gets up tiered a lot. And this one is Other ships. You could be your. I don't think, smoke oh, I think the Aussie Hood would be the worst of the worst of Decently tanky and decently fast. Um, but if it wasn't for the Gneiser now, this thing would have the best. Anti aircraft gun crews are on the same alert. Pen angles, alpha is just the same. And even though the guns are 381 meters, it still has less pen than, for example, the Duke of York or the Gneiser. And those, these guys have like 6 points. Gun crews are on full alert. Collapse anything that moves. That's that's what about. Um, 
yeah, anyway, um, I was rambling. Got a pen of these French 380mm guns in this UK. I love the explosion as well. Gas can be used as a German battleship or something like this. All stations which requesting fire the on the designated target. Fast shells, eight hundred. Anti-aircraft gun crews are on normal alert. Anti-aircraft gun crews are on normal alert. And of course they have a lot of explosion like recently. Yeah, it was eight hundred and twenty. Um, so it uses German battleship horizontal dispersion. It means that the shells basically land all the time. with the fast shell velocity and the standard fuse means that even when you're hitting targets, you're probably getting a lot of damage. And one of the biggest issues is really that it's basically Richelieu. It's placed in the front. Nice and angling. Um, you have the turrets. This thing has a two second faster breathing. This is very much up for this. Enemy cruiser founder. Our team has taken the lead. It's not enough. It's not enough. I, in, in fact, the only issue that the gas can out the EMs is the mission. Every other team is not the And of course, they also have things like our match. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and of course, it's got standard French turrets. Same issue that uh, but it actually has some other issues. The citadel is absolutely the citadel sticks out significantly above the waterline in size. Normally, this could be Our victory that is inside. Around. This is maybe something that could be avoided. But the problem is that the firing angles on these guns is actually getting trash. The firing angles on this gun is so if you actually want to use your back guns, you are forced to expose this to use them. Now, okay, um, this would be the issue is once again the gun. The guns are 381 millimeters, means meaning that once again you have the ability to match uh, 27 millimeters of height. Not only this, but you also has have super worst paper of all two eight battleships. In fact, the only battleship you're beating in penetration is the monarch. Just shoots HG most of the time, so it's, it's not, let's say it's not that big of an achievement. Um, the thing has improved accuracy, I think it had 2.0 like sigma, it's pretty good accuracy with these guns, but this just messes with the whole purpose of the ship. Because, uh, in, order to, because they can get so big, in order to truly like punish the ships, you have to close, and then because of four angles, you have to give broadside. So the ship doesn't have uh, any improved healing board. Oh, it does have a 60 second cooldown. Um, oh, yeah, and actually, the ceiling party, I know. You have an improved healing capacity on it. Um, but the damage one is normal. Ultimately, it's just Our victory is inside. Now I say this, I've, I've done okay in this one. Okay, let's see. Drop this. Done okay in this one. 74% win rate, not that many games, but like, uh, I've been able to do okay with this game, in this thing, but I haven't really been enjoying it. Because if you guys have ever played battleships with more complex firing angles, it's not fun. Because you just to use your guns, you're forced to experience the time. Shit like this, especially because I'm so many battleships that basically. It's a really frustrating experience. The 32 mm play thing also means it's a frustrating experience to be HE spam. There's not a whole lot of reason to get this. That's enough to read. Let's do it.
this issue with the nurse is she Anti-aircraft gun crews are on full alert. Now, normally that would be great. Uh, Enemy aircraft gun is blown up. So you're not really doing any DPM. In fact, the only thing you're really doing is surviving. That's not enough to be a character. Now, if this ship was a free XP ship, I probably wouldn't be. Considering this ship is for steel, you have to pay it to get the electric steel as well. And you can just then pick it up. Anti aircraft gun crews are on normal alert. Smurfs, Malak. These are ships that could make my turn. Like these major. Like this, that would make it better at least. But you can get these ships. There's just no reason to get the new ship. And that might be the same reason why I'm advising against that. The Zuma isn't that bad of a ship, but it's basically the same size. It's got 25mm plating all over the place. 25 all over the place, meaning uh, every single battleship out there pretty much overmatches you. I think every single. There's just like maybe the Sharnhorst you can bounce. Um, so, and I think King George. Like basically ships that have three, less than 300. Um, everyone uh, uh, Just potato guns, that's what you can bounce in this one. Everything else overmatches you. And then it has some of the worst shape ever on the Citadel, which basically means that you can see that from every single magical angle possible. In fact, sometimes I like to joke that this Citadel looks like a coffin. If you look at it from above, you see this. it looks like a coffin. Because, well, it's very, very accurate to how plain Bazuma can be. The HDPM isn't really that special, um, the AP isn't really that special. It, the only thing this thing ship really has going for it is the large health pool. And when you can instead get things like, let's say, Alaska, which is a monster of a cruiser, or you can just say that you can get Iceland or other things for free, I don't see a whole lot of point of getting this. In fact, Yoshino has 30mm plating and torpedoes, which makes it so much more useful. Azuma is... It was, we hoped the Zuma would be good, but it just didn't end up. So, this is not a ship that is, you can, you, you can have okay games in it, but as a gaming experience, it's not very, much, very enjoyable. 920 meter turning circle on a ship with this size, citadel size is painful to say the least. Anyways, there's a couple of, I don't know how many that, how many that ended up being, but there's a handful of premiums at every single tier that you should probably avoid getting, and if you already bought them and you think they're amazing, that's great for you, but um, we're, we're gonna have to agree to disagree. Once again, if you can be asked, give me a full I will Hello, hello. <laughs> this is not a YouTube video, though. This is stream, so whatever. Let's turn. I'm gonna mute notifications as well, so they don't get too. Actually, you know, I've gotten copies, copyright stuff for my notifications because I have that lonely island. You're so humble, so that thing is actually like, like they, they claim the monetization based on that short clip. So, yeah. It will be a bit though. Yeah, fine. Let's make a bit. So legendary upgrades, I don't even remember which old ships had them. Uh, well, not premiums, that's for sure. We can just do... Let's do tech tree ships. Oh, okay, huh? <laughs> Metal Mickey, thank you for the sub. Let's see, starting off. Legendary upgrades, Shimakaze. Shimakaze legendary upgrade is probably one of the worst <laughs> legendary upgrades in the entire <laughs> Because it actively works. Now, it looks on... On third glance, it looks great. Uh, it's like it gives you what? 15%? Uh, 25% of the payload compared to the normal one that the other one is. So you're getting 10% of the payload. This looks amazing. This is really useful. Except, this is a huge issue because it's not only meant for people to traverse speed 30 seconds. And this actually means that in any sort of bonus action, your torpedoes 
are completely unusable because you can't if, if you can't go like you can't knife fight any other enemies because your two torpedo tubes are basically as slow as and if you make any sort of turn let's say you're sailing like this and then you have to turn around you have to turn your ship around and you want to torp using your other side then you have to wait a full 30 seconds for your torp tubes to basically traverse the other way so the very small reload box you gain isn't actually a realistic game. It's a statistical game. In actual real life situations, most of the time you find yourself waiting for your torp tubes many seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, which is actually longer than the increased cooldown that you gain. Not to mention that, of course, it makes you completely trash in knife fights. So this is one of the few legendary app upgrades that actually makes your ship worse. It straight up makes your ship worse not recommended ever not even with 20 km torpedoes because it's just so so bad and i mean you can do any kind of because even then it, no there's never any situation you, you don't want to gimp yourself you don't want to gimp yourself in a situation that you can't do any sort of rushing so horrendous disagree shima doesn't battle it hides and torps control x is your friend <laughs> Okay, Timiga, we're gonna have to agree to disagree. If you think Ishima doesn't battle, then there's not much I can tell you about how to play Ishima Kaze. You have already made up your mind, and you're basically that Shima that no one wants on their team. Moving on. Karabuno didn't have a legendary upgrade. Zhao, on the other hand, has a legendary upgrade. And uh, Zhao's legendary upgrade is actually one of the best legendary upgrades in the game. This thing is straight up spice. First of all, it's in the 6th slot. Many of these upgrades are in the 5th slot, which usually interfere with your concealment. But this one is in the 6th slot, which means when you're actually turning off, normally you probably want to be better, which is 12% reload. So in this case, what you're getting from this field isn't real. You gain and you gain 7% maximum damage. This means Zhao got it. Zhao this at this, and it means that the Zao has an insane rudder shift of 4.9 seconds, which is actually better than some destroyers. Now the turning circle is fairly large, but don't be thinking of it as nimble as I destroyed, and obviously the turning rate isn't as fast as I destroyed. I hate the word in the Nimble, and this combined with the good good armor of fits its place. Yamato, another one that's one of the best, in fact, yeah. <laughs> I have it slotted here just to show how damn good it is. And well, the thing which you want with a, gun, a ship like Yamato is of course improved dispersion. That's what you want with all battleships. If you can land your shells, that's how you do damage. That's what you want most of all. This thing gives you 7% better dispersion Now normally you'd run main battery for 3. This thing is six. So the main battery to speed also gets even slower. So generally you want to be running something like Yamamoto or a captain with expert marksman because this makes your turret traverse painfully sluggish if you're not running at 74 seconds. But it's still absolutely worth it. Legendary Because of that power match landing and this is also one of my top three legendary upgrades. I'm not going to be touching on the carriers because I don't play enough carriers to make an um, informed decision regarding those. Gearing upgrade is basically only Gearing's upgrade, what it does is it gives you 5% extra concealment at compared to the normal concealment at the cost of 15% main battery reload and 5% reload. For random battles, this thing is trash. Because anyone who's played random battles solo knows that when you spot the DD, your battleships are shooting the battleship 20 kilometers away, and your crews are farming the nose in battleship as well, and the only one who's actually shooting the DD that you're spotting is yourself. I've said it before, in random battles, the only teammate you can trust is yourself. Everyone else is 
uh, redundant, like, they're just useless. Don't expect anything from them. And the issue with this modified hull upgrade is that you take away 50% of your own carry power, your own main battery guns. You take away 15% of that and you place it in the hands of your teammates. And generally speaking, that's a really bad idea. Uh, I mean, it does, it, it will bump up your concealment a bit. And this thing is obviously great in competitive because being able to spot the enemy DD before they spot you um, oh, is a huge duck. mandatory thing because in competitive duck. everyone focuses the DD instantly. So this is very much a competitive oh, like, for random battles though, I don't see any reason for that. Just get that 15% duck and 5% torpedo reload instead. It's much more useful. Des Moines! The legendary upgrade on this thing is actually pretty troll. Now, the thing is, what you're trading off if you run this thing is most of the time main battery reload. So people like to think, oh, if you put this on, you're only gaining things. But no, you're not just gaining, you're also giving up 12% reload to get it. However, this thing is pretty damn amusing. It encourages a different playstyle because if you run both th this thing, note that this gives both rudder, sh both rudder shift and acceleration. Which means you don't need to run rudder shift here, you can run acceleration here. And this is called a double acceler acceleration le legendary build. And you already have a really good rudder shift to 6.9 with this build, but your acceleration is just straight up hilarious. Like, it, it just, you, you speed off like a rocket. And you stop fast and you speed off like a rocket and you can be very erratic, surprising. It can be hard to shoot you. you. You see a battleship, you sit still, you see a battleship shoot you, you accelerate out of the way and the shells literally land behind you. So there are absolutely options to play. If you like playing with your speed, if you like playing with your acceleration, Legendary Des Moines is very, very good. It doesn't make the top three though because uh, ultimately sitting behind uh, an island or just straight up out trading enemy ships by running this thing is pretty damn good as well. So it's Tokyo Drift Demon. one. It's a fun meme build and it's very strong, but I would say it's kind of just equal to the normal Des Moines. It's a different approach. Uh, Legendary DM is hilariously fun. I'm not gonna go out of my way and say it's better though, because it's situational. Uh, in situations where you can use smoke, you can use cover, and all you're basically doing is wailing down damage on the enemy, this upgrade will obviously be significantly better. Wooster, mm, what the hell was this thing? Oh, enhanced countermeasures. I would say more of a competitive thing and only if you have someone to smoke you up. Most of the time, Woosters, well, Woosters are really good on flanks or just behind islands, but the, the biggest issue really with this legendary upgrade is that it boosts things that already have very long duration. If you catch someone in your radar, if they, they're not unlikely to sit in your radar for that full duration, that 40 seconds or whatever it is, they're very unlikely to actually sit in it. So most of the time this is kind of wasted, especially since radar on light cruisers has been normalized to this uh, 9 kilometers. More than likely, by the time this radar runs out, the target will either be dead or it will have left your radar range. So this buff is first Defensive AA, kind of same thing. Um, unlikely, a carrier will fly around in AA for the full 48 seconds. Um, more than likely, it will be effective the first 20 or so, and then you're gonna reset that yourself. Same thing with the Hydro. Hydro, I mean, uh, th uh, that's probably the most useful thing, like, the increased Hydro. If you're pushing up and you know there's a DD who's dropping torps or whatever, having increased Hydro duration is probably the most useless, uh, most useful one of all of these. The issue is that what you're trading in order to get this is the best stat in the game for a light cruiser, especially a radar light cruiser, and that is concealment. So, in a division, someone with someone to smoke you up, someone to support you, sure, it's a good upgrade, but for just solo play, I have a hard time justifying Increase dispersion of shells fired on your ship, which on which which on a very good place. Flank play, nay, just nay. Montana, Montana legendary is another one that's questionable. Well, Montana as a whole is kind of questionable. Um. 
the, what it does is enhanced control well, it reduces your fire extinguishing time by 50%. The standard repair time is 70%. That's basically useless. You rarely, if ever, lose your uh, rudder. The rudder shift time is really good. And the fire extinguishing time is really good. The flooding is pretty okay. The steering gear's repair time is useless. So what are the benefits of this thing? Well, you become basically immune to fires. Um, fires and flooding are very... If you run the full build with this and this and then you mix in others, you stack them on top of each other, fires are kind of ignorable. The issue is that it makes your concealment complete. Uh, I think I actually played, I even have a YouTube on a bit of playing this one. The biggest issue that this does is it makes your concealment ダンナ君張りなさい。え、フィグ。フィグ。全方の平井でください。皆さん、私の指示に従ってください。so this doesn't really offer you a lot of benefits. Whereas being able to sneak up on them with concealment or disengage with concealment might be much more I don't, I've tried it, and if you with a carrier, I think this thing will be good. Uh, because with a carrier, everyone is spotted all the time anyway. Concealment doesn't matter, there's a lot of HP shows when you back and forth. This thing shines when you division with a carrier. For solo play, um, if you can't ensure that there's a carrier, when people are doing carrier directives, I like running it. But if you can't ensure it, concealment is just going to be better. Concealment is just going to be better most of the time. Because when you run the, the uh, improved dispersion module on the Montana, what you want to do is get as close as you can and then unleash a full volley with this improved dispersion and catch people hard and delete. Them. If you can't catch them off guard and they know where you're shooting from, Montana sadly only has 406 mm guns, so it's pretty easy to angle against this AP and mitigate the damage significantly. So, no, can't, can't really recommend it. It's, it's a division play. Cover Legendary Upgrade um, is another upgrade that is basically completely useless. It's just a what it does is it's a with heavy weight of Heavyweight artillery gives you damage, minus 6% reload, and plus 30. Now this sounds like a really good upgrade, but on paper this is like, wow! Well, the issue is that it replaced, after they nerfed cover rudder shift, it basically is mandated. If you run this one, Yes, we have an AFT captain around. Looks like we don't. We'll go into the He's not. Good alive. Safety range, you can get a pretty nice Now, this sounds nice, but then you start looking at the actual issues here. Main battery, reload uh, turret first and reload are both fine. The gun battery seems really good, but your rudder shift. 8.9 second rudder shift on a destroyer. This is brute. This is Twitter. Oh, Hindenburg is 9.7. I'm sorry. It's actually slightly better than Hindenburg's. Very, very good. What was Des Moines? Des Moines with. Oh, Des Moines is 8.6. So it's worse rudder shift than Des Moines. Now, how about its full battleship AP penetrations? So being agile and being untouchable is a gimmick. It's what it's supposed to be good at. 
体得。But with this one shift, you are very easy to hit the range because you're a beautiful battle with AP pens, which means they don't even need to switch to HE. They can just take pot shots at you. And because with this build, your concealment is also trash. 9.7, you can't push in anywhere. If you try to push in with 9.7, you get outspotted by cruisers. Like cruisers will outspot this thing. Multiple ones will outspot this thing. And trying to push in, being spotted, having to use a nine-second run shift and seven hundred and sixteen turning circles very, very slowly. We are out while everyone turns their guns and starts firing on you. It's terrible. It just you lose agility for six percent reload. It's not worth it. Range increase is also questionable at best. At best, I have managed to make use of the legendary module using smoke. Because then you can smoke up and you can sit in the smoke and you can kind of farm, but even then, it just doesn't fulfill its purpose. I mean, Kaba is already in a bad spot. The legendary upgrade doesn't solve this issue. It kind of just makes it worse. Grozovoy, Grozovoy upgrade is very good. Grozovoy upgrade is very good if you're building for pure guns. You go for the full gunboat build. The recoilless main 